Hey everybody, this is Nine. Welcome to the B side, and I am so lucky today to be talking to you with La Machina. It's their premiere interview, and um, I, I, I'm so excited to have you all on the show because I'm a big fan of all the projects that you all do. But the the fact that the three of you have come together is really cool. Yeah, oh, yeah. thank you for Thanks. having us. So uh, we have uh, Susie, Ricky, and Michelle, and um, tell us a little bit about what brought you not only together but also what brought you to music uh in general like you know what what turned you on because i i can guess that some of your influences but i'm sure we'd like to hear <laughs> yeah michelle michelle was the mastermind yeah of all <laughs> i think she needs to tell I, the you story know what? i think it was just like it was meant to be kind of a situation the yeah. universe yeah. definitely Especially brought like us last, yeah. last year you know we were in a band together so i kind of was cut off cut off loose so I was like, oh, it'd be kind of cool to continue. We had songs from my end. So she hit me up and we kind of jammed like a year, a year ago. ago. Yeah. And so then she got the idea, what if I do bass? Da, da, da. So we never, you know, we never did our next session. We kind of mm -hmm. just like, we did like one yeah, initial so jam. Like, so then when Ricky finally got, she had some open time. Uh, how how do you have open time, Ricky? <laughs> You know, the, the universe just makes time for the stuff that is supposed to happen. You know, yeah. it's one of those things that you it just gets created. And yeah, Michelle hit me up and she was like, hey. And I honestly didn't know if I would have time. And then she just said, hey, I have some really cool songs. And Susie wants to play bass. Can I send them to you? And at that point, when I heard the songs, I there was no way that I could ever, I could say no. Like at that point, it was like. This is ha this is gonna happen. Yeah. Like whatever it takes. Like and she did been... drum demos like that week and I just sent it and like I layered them like boom or like Yeah, it happened in like three weeks. <laughs> and because we hadn't gotten together yet, we were sending each other like demos of songs yeah. through emails and going back and forth while well, learning them. we did a lot of free production before we even got into the rehearsal studio together. Yeah, it was like yeah. three weeks before and our first day we actually had our first rehearsal, we had did a photo shoot. We had already like came up with the band name and then we had our first rehearsal and we're like, we hope this doesn't suck. And it's like, <laughs> it's already trained. The train's already bam, bam, bam. <laughs> yeah. But it was really organic. You yeah, know? it, it was wasn't very forced. natural. We, it just kind of came together. We've all played together at shows. We, you know, we're friends. We've got a lot of respect for each other. So it was just, it was natural to do something like this. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. Um, so t tell me um, about Re the recording press you have the one track out already uh teenage head that is i i got my ass kicked across the room when i turned the speakers <laughs> on man it was just amazing absolutely amazing track um so what are you recording uh today or yeah you know, do you want to see the studio is that yeah it? sure that'd be awesome okay, okay so we're going to take you on a little tour we're at kitten robot okay this is paul rossler's studio, studio. Okay, Michelle's the boss right now. And just like really, really great, like the best drum sounds. Because I don't record anywhere else, to be honest. Um, this is, let me turn on the light in here, uh, where we have the vocals set up today, but normally drums are set up. Yeah, like the fancy stuff. Mm -hmm. And then this is where we track drums, vocals, percussion will get tracked today. Michelle's doing her leads today. This is, this is, I think, yeah. yeah. So nine, we've already, we've recorded seven songs. So Teenage Head came out of that batch. But today is like our polishing day. We're yeah. Going over, we're doing leads. So we have six more vocals. songs. Yeah. yeah. So they're they're in the we bag. Got some rain sticks going on. Yeah, yeah I brought a I brought a rain stick. <laughs> so hippie. It's like psychedelic shit. It's a little bit. Right on. Right on. <laughs> who did the who did the mix for your, for the single because the sound is so so good, right? Like it right from the second it hits the the quality is so so spot on. The mix is so spot on. Something Ricky, I think I told you this before that you you um, are so good at drumming as part of the song rather than and I like these guys for what they do, but rather than like an Alex Van Halen thing where it's mm -hmm. so ridiculously over the top and it's all about the drums. Yeah. Exactly. Dude, this is like classic rock and roll. And I think people want that simplicity sometimes just to like groove and feel it. Mm -hmm. And like, 
you know, I it's like being a musician for the song and building the song. But yeah, we had some good people in our court for it, and we're really excited. So um, Paul but, Rossler. I'm sorry, go ahead. Paul Rossler did the engineering. Uh-huh. He got all the songs. And then the mix and master was Mass Giorgino, and he uh, is out of uh, Illinois. Uh, he does a studio called Sonic Iguana. It's like where every 90s punk rock band, like Screeching Weasel, Queers, like mm-hmm. all like that, you know, like post Ramones, like second generation right. Ramones bands, yeah, went yeah, to record. Like he, people seek Mass out, and Mass had reached out to me and was like, "Hey, I want to do a project with you someday, like when, whenever it's available." Mm-hmm. And so when this happened, I was like, "It'd be really cool to have that influence because he's just he is yeah, so wonderful." And him and Michelle worked, it. He's got yeah, the, him he's and got Michelle worked really, really hard together just to like make it just pop and. He's cool, yeah. yeah like, he's so I was sure because cool. sometimes some engineers will be kind of like, oh, don't tell him. But he was like, yeah, let's do this. I'm anal. I'm like, so am I. Yeah. <laughs> right. But yeah, so we're here. So we, we tracked everything live. And then, yeah, like Susie said, we're just um, polishing up. Uh, Michelle's got a big day today, just doing like leads and um, vocals. Do backing vocals. vocals. Yeah. More vocals. Just fun stuff. We all sing, so it kind of makes it fun. Yeah. yeah. And Two we, lead singers. We had a rehearsal last night, yeah. and it was fucking awesome. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's just really cool to do this. That's really, really cool. Michelle, tell, tell me about um, leads, uh, because it seemed like in the, in, the, in the 90s, and maybe starting with, I don't know, I want to say with, like, um, I want to say with, like, REM, maybe, l- l- guitar solos kind of, like, fell for a while like there was no there were no good guitar solos or if there was one it was like kind of like a, a heavy metal bb king one note at a time kind of a solo thing your solos are are absolutely kick ass from both of you actually uh what's the i don't, I don't want to say what's the impetus but what do you think what do you think the the trend is that's bringing this sort of like just back to kicking your butt kind of music well we all have very different influences you know like we come from different places in rock and roll oh which are what Michelle's doing is just like this fucking like classic like hit you in the face balls to the wall like exactly what rock and roll has been missing you know (laughs) yeah (laughs) this is the thing too because a lot of women sometimes when you start doing a lot of lead stuff you get really into the metal stuff Mm -hmm. i don't necessarily want to get just completely like metal I love the it's psychedelic. The like, I love the psychedelic stuff in there, and sometimes people forget. So I love still like the psychedelic, but then there's still that rock and roll element mm-hmm. together. Yeah, so yeah. You want she that. uses a lot of wah. Oh, so cool. <laughs> she them together. You know? And that's what I think makes it so different. You know? I mean, yeah, she's unique. like the psychedelic one. Yeah, you're just everything. Garage just, punk. Just, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and like I'm a little bit more like the 1977 like yeah. Buzzcocks influence kind of. You know, but together, like, we just blend in this yeah. really cool way. It's magic. Yeah. We want to be able to have, like, a show, too. Yeah. And for the first yeah. time, I think we've never really thought about putting on, like, an actual show more than the music. Mm-hmm. But I think, you, like, our conceptual beginnings are more, like... There's, like, production value. Yeah, to we're going to go... Yeah. For, we Hopefully, we can get some money to actually yeah. put on, like, because we have, like, we have a lot of money. We have like a vision, yeah. yeah. So, but we Those can't are... tell you now. It's got to be surprised. Yeah. Okay. So okay. The wheels are turning constantly. <laughs> right on. So, where where are you guys playing soon that we can see you? Well, <laughs> our first show is going to be in the desert. We thought that was um, appropriate. Yeah, it's like this weird, crazy, out in the middle of nowhere generator party. Yeah, out in Slab <laughs> City. Are you familiar with Slab City? Uh, out where? Slab City. Oh, I've so, heard of Slab. I yeah, haven't it's been... like this commune out in the desert by the Salton Sea. It's very off the grid. People live in their campers there. They've got a venue. So this is um, the third year of Fuck It Fest. And right. I've, I've helped throw this with some friends of mine and it's just growing, you know, but it's a really, it's really for the artists because it's a cool place to play. And uh, it's really trippy when you're out there on stage and you're playing out into the desert and you can feel how like wide open that is, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And um, like 
half an hour later, you'll get a big group of people being like, hey, we just heard you from two miles down. Can Sweet. you play again? You know? Like, wow. So it's kind of like this free-for-all, yeah. fuck it festival where, you know, you just have a good time with the locals out there and you're playing to people that really, you know, appreciate it because not a lot of bands go out that way. Oh. And we thought that'd be a cool warm-up for us. Yeah. Just to, like, you know, shake it off in the desert yeah. and get trippy and shit. <laughs> so when, when is Fuck It Fest? That's January 17th. 2020 it's, it's a friday. friday yeah starts at five o'clock we're gonna go on around 9 20 or so and uh so if anybody wants to make the the trip out and do it's like nam dropping, weekend too so people will be yeah. In town. yeah yeah you'll be Come there yeah. Yeah. it's not that far <laughs> from anaheim our first show yeah uh, tell me about punk rock bowling festival you're you're playing the main stage Who's, oh who's, do you know who's on the very first show confirmed? Yeah, our very um, first show we confirmed was in fact, we had to announce yeah, the we band. We had to announce the like, we kind of had to like hurry up and announce the band because they were announcing punk rock bowling and we wanted to make the announcement, but we had, yeah, so we'd announce the band on the same day as punk rock bowling announcement. It was nuts, but that week was nuts because she was, <laughs> everybody was in a different place. We were, yeah, we were all in different states. She was on tour, yeah, I was on that was tour. Back home. So she was doing a video. We haven't seen you. I got this video. I've been I'm working like, 10 hours. I got a fucking video, guys. And I'm working with a guy with a mixer. Dude, change this. Can you change this? And like, we got, like, yeah, all we had the emails, emails, the video. Set, like, right. Pick a pick a uh, pick a picture. She was working the record deal on San Francisco. Oh yeah, I got a yeah. record so deal. Everybody was just like, like, kind of like, yes. and we, yeah. Yeah. Friday, we're all just like, oh, oh my god, it was like it's really finally shit. here. But yeah, we got punk rock bowling, and then they were announcing that Friday coming up, and like we had a video in the works. We had not we even had, announced the band. We had the single that we had chosen, not another teenage head, to be the single. Right. You know, but it was like, oh my god, we have to ramp this up yeah. and be ready for Friday because they're gonna announce it on the website. And if we don't have a bio and the picture yeah. chosen All the and stuff. a video to you website, know. I had to build oh, a website. Oh, oh, my God. Website. It was just <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, we didn't even have our social. That, yeah. week, that week was fucking gnarly. But we <laughs> but did. Man, but, you know, <laughs> we got it all done and everybody's like, wow, you guys like a really good it influence looked, on how to get shit done. You yeah. Do like within like a week. <laughs> It was like, boom, boom. Like, we all had a plan. It was like, yeah. you do this, you do this, yeah. I'll do this. What else do we need? What are we forgetting? Yeah, right? We're yeah. like, oh. and then it was like, oh, I think we did it all, you guys. Yeah. I know. Everyone breathe. Yeah. yeah. So I'll give you a little cute short story about punk rock bowling and kind of okay. how that happened, you know. Um, well, Turbulent Hearts got to play last year, and so did the darts, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, for me, that was like a really big step, you know, getting invited to be a part of that. I've always wanted to play punk rock bowling. And afterwards, I sent a follow-up email to Mark Stern being like, dude, that was amazing. And, you know, I'm coming for that main stage some way, somehow. He's like, okay, just keep me posted, you know? And then Machina happened. I'm like, dude, gotta get on that shit, yeah. you know? So I sent him an email and I'm like, you know, if there's any room for us, in any capacity, anywhere. And here I am expecting to get like a midnight club show. Yeah. Club. Right. So, like we would be so to get a club like, show. Club. We would have played yeah. anywhere associated with punk rock bowling this year, you know? And he's like, well, I've got other things pending. We'll see. Hit me up in a week. Two days later, he's main like, stage. main stage, we have a spot Yeah, let me know if you guys want to confirm. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, and like, I hadn't checked my emails because I was stressed the fuck out. <laughs> and um, I checked the email within the last like six hours of when the the, the, you have to get it in by a certain date. The off. So that I was know. really special. It felt it, that kind of like solidified, like, oh shit, this is something. Yeah. Like, and uh, people are believing in it right off the bat. Dude, you know? and Susie's the ultimate punk rocker. If anyone yes. deserves to be on that stage every single year, yes. I fucking love punk rock bowling, man. Yeah. But, and, <laughs> and, and the Turbulent Hearts was so, the performance was so awesome too last year. Thank you. That um, was scary. <laughs> I agree. Was when it? you're bent over backwards on the guy's shoulders. <laughs> yeah. I just, well, yeah, I just want to be remembered, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being on the B-Side. We're super nice. excited to have you guys. I don't want to hold, I know we went five minutes over of your studio time. So, but okay. uh, I, I really appreciate you guys being on the show and we uh, are, are big fans. We, we're gonna post the video to our homepage and uh, let everybody know where they can see you as soon as possible. Great, awesome. and we'll be sharing as well. So yeah. thank you so much. Thank you for the interview. Thank you, Nine. You're welcome, you're welcome.